Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Now I've recently done a couple of projects where I rough turned a rather wet log of walnut and then six days later I just finished off one of the boxes. Now this morning I honestly didn't know what to do when I came out into my shed, just had a look around. I didn't want to get into any long projects and I looked on my top shelf which tends to be where I put my projects that I put to one side and probably never ever finish on some of them but I first thing I picked off was this rough turned box it's ash and going on the date there it was 18th of June 2017 I turned that and it's lost around about 10 to 20 percent of its weight since that was turned back then and it's got nice thick walls it doesn't seem to have warped too much I mean if anything I would say that is almost true so I will, that's one thing I will finish off. And while I was there, I spotted a couple of bowls. Now, I believe this is silver birch. I've dropped some CA glue in there in places. So there must have been some cracks or something developing or that I'd spotted when I was initially rough turning this. This one's actually quite nice. It's got nice thick walls uh, for its size. And I don't know how well that actually shows on there. I mean, if you look at that carefully, where the grain runs across, the, t the tenon on there has really gained width where it's stayed the same that way. So that should hopefully be a reasonably easy one to do. And then I also came across this one. Now that has got really thin walls and you'll see there that we've got a piece split out. That could have been from the drying process. I suspect it was but it could be that it just got knocked with something on the top shelf with things being thrown up there from time to time. I'm not gonna go through the whole process like I did with the box showing everything in that such detail because these should hopefully be fairly simple things to do. I'm going to do this on a time lapse and I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I will put some music on, it won't be very loud. So if you don't want the music just turn your volume down or mute it so I do apologize on there but it's just that there's three here which might take me a little bit of time and it's just the easiest way to do it now I've got my block here on the lathe already for the bowls unfortunately I didn't mark where the center point was when I first turned these so I'm going to have to sort of estimate that as I go along I will mount them on here just so that I can first of all throw up the tenon and properly sort out some of the sides here now this one, because of that, and the way it's going to spin around the lathe, the tools are going to catch on that straight away and it's going to ping out. What I think I'm going to do, I don't want to pull this and break it because I can. what will happen is, I think as the crack is slowly going down that way, it will probably take out even more of the bowl. So I will just cut this off with a saw first. And I may well end up having this as a bowl to be honest, where this sharp edge is on the rim. So it is a very sort of small, shallow bowl. And I'll just come back at the end when I finish them all.
Now, the two bowls, what I've done so far, I've just given these one coat of Danish oil. So they're still a little bit tacky and just drying. Uh, as you can see there, the walls on this are really, really thin. Uh, we're talking probably about two mil on the top here and it goes thicker as it goes down. And just on both of these, sign, dated and put the wood on the bottom like I normally do. This one, I had to just take the top down a bit because the piff was actually in the side and that would have caused issues later on. Uh, and certainly with it being so thin, it would have just probably just blown out anyway. Uh, but that one turned out quite nicely. And the second one I had loads of problems with, uh, basically caused by myself. I was working on really thin walls like that again, uh, even though this one had a bit more meat. And I got so far down and I went through the edge which is where that bit is there. And while I was having my lunch, I thought, well, I'm not gonna just throw it away. I'll come back out and do something else with it. So I just parted that top bit off and it's now become almost like a little tray. And then to top it off, when I was then got it reversed onto the lathe there, just to take the bottom off, the, the little nub, when I was taking it off, I just took too much off and it wobbled off and I created a couple of three dents. Uh, I also managed to, before I even did that, to just catch the edge here with a skew. Uh, so I then had to do loads more sand just to get the, the scratch mark out from the skew. So that one has been a bit more trying, uh, but at least I've got something out of it. Now I haven't had time to do anything with the box. I'm going to leave this for another project video, and it's not just going to be just finishing the box off. Well, it will be, but I'm also going to decorate it. How I'm going to do that yet, I don't know. I had thought about, because it's ash, giving it a whole coat of the either the spray lacquer, uh, the ebonizing lacquer, or black paint. But I'm now in two minds because it does have this really lovely dark side to it on the grain. So I'm undecided. I may take it back, leave it natural colours. I may even just darken it slightly with the walnut crystals, uh, just to darken up a little bit rather than go for the full-blown black with the ebonizing or black paint. And I would certainly like to do probably something like I did with a vase uh, with the Joe Sonja paints and the strings. But having said that, I may well also do some topography or something like that. So that will be certainly a project video to follow at some point. Now, I'm sure I'm not the first and I certainly won't be the last to do anything like that. Uh, going through the sides. Uh, I've been through the bottom of a bowl once or twice, not very often, thankfully. Uh, so it, it does happen to us all. And and again, as always, I think it's always important to show your mistakes. And hopefully on there, you can probably see how thin and flimsy this is. Um, it really does take very little pressure. You really do have to work on the top edge first, try and uh, smooth it off and then slowly work down, which is what I was doing on this one. But like I say, I just, just didn't stop enough time just to check the thickness, which is why all of a sudden I went through the edge. What should have been a fairly simple project, uh, two very simple items just to finish with. Uh, they were, As I said, they were originally rough turned two years ago and had just been sitting on my shelf to dry, just in the workshop, no box or anything like that, uh, which I think they dried fairly well. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next project video.